Hi, before the formal presentation begins, I wanted to take an opportunity to introduce myself. In case you don't know me, I'm Lisa Kane. I'm the reading interventionist at Bardstown Primary School. If you ever have any questions, concerns, or just want some ideas, please feel free to reach out to me. I think my contact information is off to the side, my email, as well as my Facebook page. Thanks. This presentation is the first in a series of decoding tips and tricks. Let's start off by looking at the short vowels. Why are vowels so important? My child's teacher keeps sending work on vowels. Why? Well, the reason is because every word in our language has at least one vowel in it. Also, when you look at longer words, Every syllable within a word has one vowel in it. So if we teach our children those vowel sounds and those patterns, they're going to be a lot more automatic when they're actually trying to sound out or decode words while they're reading. Well, but what makes it a vowel? You've heard about vowels and consonants, but what makes a vowel a vowel? Here's the reason why. All vowel sounds are made by not blocking the airflow from the lungs. Parts of the mouth of the tongue don't block that air. Instead, each vowel sound is made by just kind of changing the shape of your mouth. For example, when I make the consonant sound for P, P, my lips are blocking that sound. Or with the consonant L, U, I'm lifting my tongue to block that sound. But with the vowels, a, E, I, O, U, nothing is blocking those sounds. That airway is way open. Because of this, I teach the children that you can sing the vowels. Singing the vowels, that sounds kind of weird, doesn't it? So let me explain a little bit what that means. Let's try it out. Sound out the word last, the regular way. L, A, S. Now let's try it by singing out those vowels loud and proud. Last. Wasn't it easier for your ear to put those sounds together when you sang them? We also need to find ways to make those vowel sounds stick in their memories. Okay? To do this, we can involve as many senses as possible when we're teaching new ideas. So we can add some visual cues or some motions to those vowel sounds. This is an example of what it looks like to add some picture cues to it. All I did was I took clip art and I added them to the vowel letters. So for A, I added a picture of an apple. For E, an elephant. For I, ick. For short, short O, octopus. And for short U, underwear. I just use clip art to make these. It was really simple. But if you're not into making them, if you want to buy them, there are all kinds of there are all kinds of things that you can buy on the web. Just do a Google search for vowel cues or vowels with pictures and you'll come up with all kinds of places that you can actually purchase them or download them. Now we're going to talk about adding some of those motions to them. What's going to sing and dance some of those vowel sounds? A little bit about singing and dancing those vowels, so let me show you what I mean by that, okay? So the first one is A. Let's do it. And it's going to bite into an apple. So you go, A is for apple. And the apple, it's really cool because when you stick out your teeth to bite into that apple, that's actually what your mouth looks like when you're making that A ah sound, okay? Here's the next one. E is for elephant. So you make your elephant ears, and it goes, E is for A. Elephant. And if you notice, my mouth is kind of skinny. Eh. Okay. The next one's a little bit gross, but guess what? It keeps the kids entertained. Those kindergarten, first and second graders like things a little bit gross. You ready? So I is for icky. So we're going to pretend like we're picking our icky boogers. You ready? So it goes like this. I is for ick. Good. The next one. Oh, I want you to pretend like you're an octopus and you're swinging those octopus tentacles. So here it goes like this. O is for octopus. And the very last one, the kids giggle every time. U is for underwear. And we say, since that's kind of embarrassing, we have to whisper it. So we go, U is for underwear. 
Okay, try these out with your kids. Once the kids get an opportunity to figure out those vows, matching them with those patterns, matching them with the motions, you can actually play some games in there to help them figure that out. So here is a quick game that we call Speed Vows. You've gotten a chance to get those motions down a little bit. You can actually take those motions and you can turn it into a game. This is all I did. I took a piece of paper. I wrote the letter the vowel letter down at the bottom, and then I folded them in half to make these little tents. Those tents make it a little bit easier for the kiddos to grab onto. So this is how you play the game speed vowel. The person who's the partner says the vowel sound. The kid, as quickly as they can, picks up that vowel, says the sound, and makes the motion. You ready? So the grown-up's going to say, eh. The kid will go, E is for elephant, ah. O is for octopus, A. A is for a. Apple. The whole idea is to make these vowels, the recall of these vowel sounds, so automatic that when a kid's reading, they don't have to think about it. Okay. The key to this game is speed, speed, speed. Do it as fast as you can to make it fun. Here's another game. It's really super simple, but the kids beg to play it. Another game that we can play using those same motions is called Make It, Take It. All I did was I took some cards. Actually, it's just pieces of paper where I wrote the vowels on them. I have about, I'd say, eight of each vowel, so I have a stack of 40 cards. And then what it does is one person's the dealer. I wish I had other people here with me so I could show, but we're going to pretend that all these people, there are people all the way around this table, okay? So... The dealer picks up the first card and lays it in front of the first person, and that person looks at that letter, and they say this vowel, and they say the song. So they'll go, U is for underwear. Okay? The dealer hands the card to the next person. The next person has an E. It doesn't match the U, so they're going to do the same thing. They're going to sing their song. They'll go, E is for elephant. Okay? Dealer passes the card to the next person. It's an I. We still don't have a match. So that person lays their card down, and they go, I is for ick. The next person gets a U. Guess what they get to do? They get to look to the person over here who has their stack, and they get to take that entire stack of U's and then have to sing the song. U is for underwear. So this person now has the U's. The person over here doesn't have anything yet, but guess what? There won't be any sore sports because that person gets a card next, and they'll say A is for apple. The next person comes along. They get a U. Guess what they get to do? They get to grab the U's from these guys. U is for underwear. So they take that. Now they have two stacks. Simple, simple game, but guess what? The kids love it. What's even better is if the grown-up plays with them, the kids love taking the grown-ups' piles. Okay? The whole idea, again, is to make these vowel sounds so automatic that when they're reading, they don't have to think about them. Okay? Have fun. So, when you're finished with this game, you figure out the winner by counting out the piles. The person who has the most piles is the winner. Again, the goal is to make these vowel sounds recalled automatically. Okay? What happens if they're still not getting the vowel sounds after I've played these games forever? Well, some kids actually need some help to feel what those sounds feel like in their mouth. Okay? Short vowel sounds are really tricky because they sound so much alike. Most of those vowel sounds are just made by how wide your mouth is opened. This picture shows a progression of how the mouth widens for each sound. I teach the kids that your mouth starts with a smile and the I sound is the narrowest and it slowly widens as you go down that progression. But when you move from the a uh to the ah, the shape actually changes from a smile to a more open shape. Okay, this is kind of hard to explain, so let me demonstrate what this looks like. All right, guys, we're about to get up close and personal. You're going to get a really good look at my mouth here in a second. Okay, so when we start talking about the vowels, we talk about how the mouth changes a little bit each time, okay, because you're not really blocking anything with your tongue. There are all those open sounds like we discussed earlier. So we start off with the smile sounds, and the skinniest one, the narrowest one is eh, you know, the eye. If you take a look at it, 
and teeth are really pretty close together. I. Here's the difference between I and E. My mouth opens just a little bit, but I still have a smile. E. So watch I. I. E. See how it opened just a little bit more? Yeah. The sound after that one, my mouth opens just a little bit more, and that's the A. Ah. Okay, so watch. Here's I. E. Here's E. Eh. Eh. Here's A. Ah. A. Ah. Same shape. My mouth is just opening a little bit more. And when we get to A, uh, the U, short U sound, my mouth is really, really open, but it's still a smile. A. Ah. So here's the progression again. I, e, e, a, a. So I actually have the kids put their fingers inside of their mouth sometimes and feel it. I, my teeth are stuck together. E, I can maybe get one little finger in there, maybe. A, I can almost get two fingers in there. A, sometimes they even try to shove all three of them in there. Okay, once we get past a, my mouth shape actually changes. It moves from a smile to a more open sound to a more open shape, so watch. O is ah, so it goes like this. I, e, a, a, a. So sometimes kids can't hear it, but if they actually start feeling what their mouth feels like, that's gonna help them with those short vowel sounds. Thank you much. Again, the whole point is to help those children recall those vowel sounds quickly and automatically. If they can do that, they're not going to be spending all their brain power on remembering the sounds. This will help them be more fluent with decoding, which will lead to the most important part of reading, understanding the story. As always, if you need help or have questions or just want some ideas for reading, please, 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 please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm always glad to share with you. Thanks so much for spending some time with me.